given all praise to Yahweh by Shem Al Shai by Shem Rakhak to the 144,000 and the rest of the elect out there. Shalom to you all. And I'm going to entitle this video Melchizedek and our Lord, which is Yahweh Shai, is one and the same. And Melchizedek was not a Canaanite vocab Malone. So I was listening to this the other day. I wasn't at my house. But uh, I said I got to make a video. I was listening to some of it. I caught it about a minute in, or maybe actually 57 minutes in, or almost 58 minutes in. Actually, 57 minutes in. Uh, 57 minutes in. Uh, what is that? 50, 50 some odd, 50 seconds into it. And uh, here you got the, this is put up by, by the way, this is, uh, I'm going to play some of this. This is um uh what you may call it uh fair use, fair use, fair use. Uh, put up by Vocab Malone, uh Deacon, talking about Deacon the car, the priest of on, because he ain't no priest of Israel, he got a bald head. Installed himself as priest Haka. And he's I've been calling him priest of on for a couple of weeks already. He hasn't responded because he has a bald head. You cannot be a priest of Israelite, Israel of Israelites, of the Israelites. Um, I don't know what you mean by, of the, of the order of El Melchizedek. I, I don't know what you mean by that. Melchizedek, I guarantee you didn't have a shave his head. So anyway, let's listen to this word salad from uh, Vocab Malone. Vocab Malone just doesn't understand it. Uh, um, Melchizedek and Yahweh Shai is one and the same. He's going to kind of say it and not even realize that he says it. And he calls Melchizedek a Canaanite. He also reads and then he says that, well, you're going to hear it from his mouth. You're going to hear it from his pie hole that, uh, that uh, uh, Melchizedek is actually a Canaanite, but then he's going to read and, and speak on the fact that he had no mother and father, then he's going to get that all mixed up with some more word salad. He just doesn't know what was going on. And the people that follow him, they, they don't know what's going on either. They're just blind. So we're going we're gonna to listen from this point in the video, 57, 57 minutes and 50 seconds in. And we're going to listen to about to our in about nine minute uh, mark of this video and I'm going to be stopping the video and I'm going to be commenting making my putting my two cents in so to speak showing you that he doesn't understand he doesn't he, vocab Malone doesn't accept the concept of uh, reincarnation in the Bible and he even says that and then he mentions GMS a, a handful of times Maybe three, four times. So let's just listen. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, so the author of Hebrews knows his Old Testament, who met Abraham as he was returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. He, he knows his Old Testament very well. But this is the Apostle Paul. Now you have uh, Zachary, Zachary and uh, Hakar. They say that uh, there's no author. We don't know who wrote it. Well, Michael the Archangel didn't write it. Paul had to write it. But let's go. Let's do this. Let's do this here. Let me pull this over. See, we're analyzing things now. Okay. Um, who wrote the book of Hebrews? Okay, the author of the New Testament epistle, which is letter to the Hebrews, is unknown, though it has tra traditionally been attributed to St. Paul the Apostle. So somebody had to write it. Somebody had to write it. And that somebody had to be an Israelite, and that somebody had to be... Mm, but, be, um, honored 
by the Most High Yahweh by Shem Yahushai and loved and beloved somebody special. It just couldn't be any old Israelite, any old Judite or Gadite just come up and write a letter. Now when you go to Hebrews, it doesn't, a matter of fact, we are going to go to Hebrews and we're going to see uh, what it says about the author, which scholars do, do all agree. If anybody wrote the book of Hebrews, would not that be the Apostle Paul? If it's not the Apostle Paul, it could have been the Apostle Peter. Like I said, it wasn't any random Israelite back there that was not of the apostleship that the Mosai just put the spirit on him and, and gave him all this information about Melchizedek. It had to be the Apostle Paul. So this is why they said what they said. Traditional attribution, uh, the epistles to the Hebrews is traditionally attributed to Paul the Apostle. Most uh, Latter-day Saints accept Paul as the author of, the, of Hebrews, or the book of Hebrews, see Bible Dictionary, Pauline Epistles. However, there are some who question whether Paul wrote this epistle because its style and language are different from Paul's other letters. But it's a part of the gospel. Traditionally, Paul the Apostle, let me highlight this in blue. Traditionally, Paul the Apostle was thought to be the author. Uh, however, since the third century, this has been questioned and the who is this consensus among most modern scholars is that the author, the author is unknown. And see, this is what scholars do. They're not spiritual people. They just, that's why they're saying what they say. But let's, but let's say it's not Paul. Let's say we find out Paul didn't write it. Peter had to write it. James had to write it. An angel of the Lord had to write it. Yahweh Shai had to write it. Somebody on a high level had to write it. And we know it's not Yahweh Shai because this, because this is, yeah, has to be Yahweh Shai explaining, uh, breaking down, um, you know, going into detail about Melchizedek. Because not too many people knew about Melchizedek. When you go to the, the Old Testament, it doesn't mention that Melchizedek didn't have a father and a mother. All right? And see, this is what scholars do. They question shit until you get confused. And see, this it's the spirit that opens your eyes to these scriptures. And that's why you have to have that eyes out. And none of these Edomite scholars, Christian scholars, not one of them have the eyes out. Not one of them. The Most High didn't deal with them, break down any precepts to them, give them any un secret understanding. They're just going by what they read and their opinion. Okay, so now let's come back over here to the video. As a matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do? Let me do this. Let me go to Hebrews 7. Matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do? Let me do this. I want to go to Hebrews 1. Okay, it doesn't say who the author is. Like if you go to Acts. Let me go to Acts. The former treaties have I made, O uh, Theophilus, which means a uh, friend of God, 
and we're going to find out of all the all that Yahushai be, began both to to do and teach. So let's go to the word Theo Theophilus. friend of God Strong's G 2321 Theophilus Theophilus a person to whom Luke addressed his gospel and the book of Acts so they say that Theophilus was a pen name of Luke Dr. Luke okay Luke 1 verse 3 it seems good to me also having had perfect understanding of all things oh that's another scripture oh that's another scripture Luke 1 and 3 to add to you got it 100% truth, 100% truth, Luke 1 and 3, Luke 1 and 3. It said, it seemed good to me also having had perfect, ooh, that's a powerful word right there. Having perfect understanding of all things from the, from the very first to write unto thee in order most excellent theolophus, the Theophilus, friend of God. Like I said, that's supposed to be his pen his pen name. You know, let's do a little bit more, but this is, oh boy. Oh, that's, oh, this is the good, I gotta remember this, gotta remember that. Luke 1 and 3. It seems good to me also having had perfect understanding, 100% truth, perfect understanding of all things, not rebuilding the transmission but all things pertaining to the scriptures from the very first so y'all got to put that in your mental rolodex you can't you can't have 99 percent. 99 won't just won't do 89 percent can't do it you got to know the whole book got to know the whole book this is beautiful man but anyway let me do this Let me do this. See, when Christians roll up, you can hit them with certain things. You can say, uh, who wrote the book of Acts? They, they, well, I'm not sure, you know? Uh, let me do this. Uh... Okay, just Theophil Theophilus. Theophilus has multiple meanings, including the name of a person in the Bible, a Greek name, right, a Greek name, and the name of an Eastern Roman Empire, meaning Jake. That was Jake. Jake ruled the Eastern Roman Empire. Uh, Theolophus is the name of a person whom uh, uh, acts uh, friend of God, loved by. Let me just try to. Let me do this. Let me do this. So you can either say, scholars would say, okay, who was Theophilus at the beginning of Luke and Acts? Theophilus was a, a high ranking. Or influ uh, influential Gentile for whom Luke wanted to provide a detailed historical account of the Messiah and the spread of the gospel. So like I said, they say that that's Luke's pen name that said that Luke was working with the Theophilus, so Theophilus, Philius, Philus, Phil 
So the same thing with Hebrews. It doesn't say Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. But Scott, most scholars would say that, yes, Paul actually wrote it. If he didn't write it, somebody high up in the pecking order wrote that book. But is it gospel? Yes, it is gospel. And Yahawashai dealt directly with the Apostle Paul. He didn't so much dealt. He dealt with Peter. He didn't deal with the, the 12 as much as he dealt with, uh, you know, Peter, James, and John. But then he, he really dealt with the Apostle Paul. Because all that information the Apostle Paul had, he, he got it directly from Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai slept with him. And Peter even made a statement in, in, in uh, 2 Peter 3, around about the 16, 17, 15, 16, 17 verse, how deep the Apostle Paul was. Why was Paul so deep as far as his letters? Because Yahweh Shai was telling him things. So now let's come back over here let's go to Hebrews Hebrews 7 I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but Melchizedek's priesthood like like Yahweh Shai. Why was it like Yahweh Shai? Because that was Yahweh Shai. Genesis uh, 14, 17 to 20. For this Melchizedek, which by the way means king of Melchizedek means king of righteousness, uh, king of Salom or king of peace. Um, Malak, Malak Tazadak is king of righteousness. Malak Shal Shalom is king of peace which is Yahweh Shai. Uh, he's also known as Prince of Peace. Prince and King. Uh, a king dies, the son is a prince. When his father dies, he becomes, or, or he, he gives, the king gives up the throne because he's a, of a certain age and the prince becomes a king. So there could be two kings living at the same time. But mostly when a when a king dies, the son of the king then becomes a a, a from goes from a prince to a king. Priest priest of the most high uh, power, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the of the kings, and blessed him. So obvious, obviously, uh, Melchizedek is higher than in rank, in the ranking order of the of the heavens and the earth. Over Abraham, Abraham gave him a, tithe, a tenth of all that he had, which is, which shows you that tithes is money too. Don't be listening to IUIC. Tithes is money too, because it said that that um everything that Abraham Abraham had he gave he gave to uh he gave to um all that he had all that he had he gave to ten percent to Melchizedek. That, that includes, he had gold, told you that in uh, Genesis 13, he had gold, silver, land, cattle. So, so, what, how do you think they built up, the, this is the question for the IUIC, how was the Vaspasian, how was Vaspasian's son Titus able to sack the temple? They didn't, they wouldn't get in shoulders of bullocks and wheat and, and grapes and stuff like that. They were getting the money. They were getting the the, 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 the the treasures in gold. Gold, silver. The priests didn't have a whole lot of money. They didn't have businesses on the side where they just made all this money. It was the people giving them the ten, their tenth, which was in the, also in the form of money. What do you think the money change was all about? In order for the people that came in three times a year, Deuteronomy 16 and 16, they had to, they had to give blessings in the form of money, tithes, and offerings and gifts come not empty-handed, right? That's that's a, a, the Passover, like I, like I mentioned, Deuteronomy sixteen and sixteen, three times in a year. Now the men shall come, um, 
and not come empty-handed. So they didn't bring bullocks. Oh, here's half of this. No, no, dumbasses. They brought money. They, they, they brought with them money. And what they did was, whatever lands that they were living in, hear me now, whatever lands that they were living in, they were dealing with that land's money. And then what they would do is, they would have to give, you know, the, like I said, the tithes, the offerings, the gifts, come not empty-handed. But they couldn't give it in that money because they were giving it to the, the Levitical priests or the priests or the temple. So they had to exchange it to get what what Bill was was this guy something Bill Bill still said that ha he says that he said we remember this the half shekel of the temple which was silver if I'm not mistaken the half shekel of the temple let me do something so we we, we get, we're going into a little bit of history too. The half shekel of the temple. Half shekel. According to Wikipedia, half shekel was a tax paid by Israelites and Levites which went towards the upkeep of the Jewish temple, Ooh. as reported in the New Testament. Traditionally, Kohanim were exempt from the tax. Oh, what is it? Kohanim or Jewish priests were exempt from the tax. Yeah, priests were exempt from, exempt from the tax and tithes. Priests didn't have to pay tithes. They, they got tithes. So to have a shekel of the temple, when they came into the land, and it's not written, this is not written in detail in the scriptures. That's why you got to know the history, all right? Was a tax paid by Israelites and Levites, which went toward, towards the, the upkeep of the Jewish temple. So it was uh, Titus that, that um, after they, defeated the uh, Israelites they went in they said let's go get the money that's what they got they got the, the and then they built um they, they, that's when they built the public works and I believe if I'm not mistaken I'll go into the history that um, and in order for them to build the Colosseum or which what that time was called the um what was it called the um Fla Flavian Amphitheater which they call now the Roman Colosseum that was built by during the time period of Titus, Vespasian, Titus, and uh, Domitian. And the money that they used, most a lot of the money they got it from taking taking it from the Israelites. So don't listen to IUI. Say you got to you can't be giving nothing, nothing in the scripture and the law. You going off? You ain't supposed to give money. Okay, good. Thank you. And like I said, anybody in GMS that, that tied to GMS, go, they're getting ready to do a land blitz in Atlanta, I think, Atlanta. Go, go, go join them, man. Go get with them. Go get with them. Don't be, don't be scared. I really, I really, I really, I came up under GMS, but I really want to join the IUIC, but I'm afraid GMS is going to talk. No, we ain't going to talk bad about you. We're going to say see you, and I wouldn't, wouldn't want to be you. All right? So now, forgive me for my rant. Okay, so it says, uh, so obviously Melchizedek was over Abraham. Melchizedek had the power to bless Abraham and Abraham was coming back from the slaughter of the kings, the Canaanites. Now this guy, this, this demon, vocab said that, uh, and you're gonna hear it, you're gonna hear it from his mouth. Um, he said Melchizedek is a Canaanite. Now, how the hell can Melchizedek be a Canaanite when he had no father and mother? He just came on the scene. It says, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. What does all mean? If he had Genesis 13, I believe it's Genesis 13, if not 14. Genesis 13, Genesis 13. It said he had, he was rich in gold and silver and land and cattle. So did he give him money? Yes. So what example are you supposed to follow? The Le Le Levitical priest? The, 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 the example of Melchizedek. First being by interpretation, king of righteousness, which is Malak Tazadak. And after that, also king of uh, uh, Selim, which is Malak Shalom. 
king of peace. It says in Isaiah that the Lord is also known as the prince of peace. Prince is uh, king, it's young king, which is king of peace. Without father, without mother, without descent. Now how in the hell is he a Canaanite if he didn't have no descent? Having neither beginning of days nor end of life. Wait, wait a minute. Al he's, wait a minute. Another way of saying it in the Greek would be Alpha and Omega. But made like unto the Son of the Most High, meaning Son of Man, uh, abideth the priest continually. So, how is uh, Machesdek still a priest? Because that's your Howard Shai. All right? Let me go to Son of. Son of God. Okay, let me see. Let me go right here, son. Strong's G, 5207. Puyas. 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 Okay. Generally used of the offspring of men. So a son of, son of, son of God is a man of God. Through the Spirit. Okay, let me see here. Okay, let me come back over here. Abideth a priest continually. So Melchizedek has been been the priest. He never lost that office. But he, he whether he went back in the spiritual realm and and and, and uh, uh vocab also said, Oh, Melchizedek died. Where did he when, when did he die? What did he die of? You said that same nonsense when you said, oh, there's no such thing as Edomites. Now all of a sudden there's Edomites. You're trying to get Edomites up in there. See, we on you, we on you, man. Like Sharp Eye Washington. Look that up. Now consider how now consider how great this man was. Because he's Yahweh Shai. Unto whom even the patriarch Abraham, Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. And then when he went to war with the kings, the Canaanites, he took what they had. And part of what they had was weapons, garments, money. They, they didn't have cattle. And verily they, they are the sons of Levi who received the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes which consist of money silver and gold other people according to the law that is of their brethren though they come out of the loins of abraham so who's the high priest of high priest melchizedek which is yahweh shai but he but he whose uh, descent is not counted for them received tithes of abraham you go back a couple of verses, he had no mother and father. He had no descent. Hey, if he would have did a 23andMe DNA test, it would be a blank, a blank page. It says, and bless him that had the promises. And without, and without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here men that die receive tithes, but there he received them of whom it is witness that he liveth because Melchizedek is Yahweh Shai. And as, and as I may, as I may so say, Levi, which is the tribe of Levi, or the son Levi, also who receiveth tithes, paid tithes in Abraham, meaning Levi came out of Abraham. Levi would be the the uh, 
the great was it the great grandson of of uh, of Abraham. Okay. I'm trying to find my space. Okay, nine verse. Did I skip a verse? Okay, and as and as I may so say, Levi also who receive receiveth tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. And he was yet in the loins of his father. Now you know what you know what that means. In other words, Le Levi's father was Jacob. Jacob's father was uh, Isaac. Isaac's father was Abraham. So when Abraham put sperm into uh, Sarah, they produced their one and only child, Isaac. So that sperm, that DNA, and that spirit goes to that line. That's what that's talking about, okay? For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Okay, even um, Vohev even quoted this. The law of S1 will not repent. Thou art a priest after uh, forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, you know what I got to do? I got to go to that. Let me open that up. And let me go to the first verse. Yahweh gives dominion to the king. A psalm of David, a song of David. Psalm means song. Yahweh said unto my Lord. Let me read, let me, let me, let me try to read that in the Hebrew. My Hebrew is very rusty. Okay, it says. Okay, right here. Yahweh La Adan La Ada It should be Ada one. It's La Adanya like the Jews say Adanoi Ad, Ad, um, It should be a, a, a Wa there. It should be Ada one Ya which means my superior. Yahweh to my superior, said to my superior, Shab, which means to sit. Then it goes on to say, that's what I wanted. So this is, so this is David saying, Yahweh said to my superior, who's David's superior? Yeah, uh, Solomon. Because Solomon is Yahweh Shai. That was his savior. So it says, Yahweh said unto my superior, sit thou at my right hand. Who's, who's going to sit at the right hand of Yahweh? Yahweh Shai. Until I make thine enemies thy footstool. When is that going to happen? When he takes his place down. The footstool is the earth and the throne is... Uh, heaven itself Yahweh shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion rule thou in the midst of thine enemies and that's what Yahweh Shai is going to do and we're going to be joint heirs with that thy people the Israelites shall dwell shall be willing in the day of thy power what does it mean that, that day of thy power is talking about when Yahweh Shai come down when this destruction comes, that's when Jake is going to see it. The ones that are still alive. They're going to say, oh, wow, the, the, the Lord. Everybody's going to shut their mouths, man. That's, uh, uh, what is that, Isaiah 52, 13, if I'm not mistaken. It said they're going to shut their mouth when they see him. They're going to say, oh, shit. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get that. And the, and the beauties of holiness from the womb of the, of the morning, thou 
thou hast the dew of thy youth. Uh, it says, Yahweh has sworn and will not repent. He said he's going to do something and he's not going to, he's not going to turn it. When he says this thing, certain things he repented, right? But there was other things that he said, I'm going to do this and this is going to come like the, like the destruction, the end of this man's system. He's not going to repent. If all these Edomites decided to fast and pray and get this out right, they, the Most High still ain't going to turn it back. Amos 1 and 11. Because they're Edomites, they're not Jake. It said, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So who, who is being talked about here? David is, is, is getting this revelation to the Lord and, and saying what the Lord told to him. And he says, this, this man that's your superior goes back to the order of Melchizedek. Why? Because he is Melchizedek. He was talking about Chaz, Ch Melchizedek. Solomon was Melchizedek. Isaac was Melchizedek. Yahweh Shai was Melchizedek. So now let's come back over here. If therefore, if therefore protect per, perfection, excuse me, were by the Levitical priesthood, because the Levites wasn't priests. They had, they, I mean, wasn't perfect. They needed to save it too. For under it, the people received the law. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the, or, the order of Melchizedek, which is Yahweh Shai, and not call after the order of Aaron? Because the order of Melchizedek is greater than the order of Aaron. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, which is the tribe, tribe of Levi. But Yahweh Shai came back as a Judah, of which no man gave... Um, attendance at the altar so the king which was judah uh, king david king solomon they were high priests over the priests a king is a high priest over the highest priest it said for it is evident that our lord sprang out of judah of which tribe moses spake nothing concerning priesthood so it's talking about judah judah is over levi and it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of the similitude means similar to of Melchizedek, king of uh, king of righteousness, there arises another priest who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. So who has the power of an endless life? Yahweh Shai. For he testifies that. Uh, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So who's a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek? Yahweh Shai. And who is Melchizedek? That was Yahweh Shai back then. So, so let me go into this now. And let's listen to this madness. And again, this is why I like the LSB. It capitalizes things that are directly from the Old Testament. They usually get it right, too. To whom also Abraham appointed a tenth part of all. So he's just recollecting the tithing part. He's just recollecting, uh, recalling the historical narrative. Understand? Where first of all, by the translation of his name, king of righteousness. And then, so the author also knew, knew Hebrew, obviously. And then also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Boom, boom. Oh, okay. So he's saying Christ is like that. He's the actual king of righteousness and king of Salem. Not a place, but of a reality, of a concept, because he's God. Who else could be the king of righteousness and the king of peace except for God and God alone? And that's the whole point Hebrews is trying to make when it says he's greater than the angels. Without father, without mother, without genealogy. And by the way, when people are like, oh, he ain't got no parents, he, he tells you what he means by that, because he says without father, without genealogy. See, so understand? He's clarifying what the hell are you talking about? It, it means what it says. Let's come back. 
And by the way, when people are like, oh, he ain't got no parents. He, that's the whole Hebrews is trying to make when it's greater than this and a king of peace, except for God and God alone. And that's the whole point Hebrews is trying to make when it says he's greater than the angels. Without father, without mother, without genealogy. And by the way, when people are like, oh, he ain't got no parents. He he's That's what it says in Hebrews seven. Without father and without mother, meaning he he had no he wasn't born out of a woman. He didn't he wasn't in the woman's womb, um, his mother's womb for nine months, ten months. As Solomon said, uh, fashion t uh, ten months. He just came on the scene like a, he was an angel. All Israelite men, women, and children are angels coming in bodies. When you when your your body gets old and you die, your spirit goes back into the body that's eternal in the heaven for you. You go back to the same uh, celestial body, angelic body in the spiritual realm. This tells you what he means by that, because he says without father, without genealogy. So you understand? He's clarifying. Having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God. That means the Son of God actually has no beginning of days. By the way, this is saying he was not created. Something that Haka denies. When it, when it said made like under the Son of God, meaning you were like an Israelite. We're sons of God. We're sons of God. In the Old Testament, Son of God is, is um, what is it? Bun Adama, which means uh, um, son or man of the earth. He has a created Jesus, which is no Jesus at all. But this Jesus doesn't have actually beginning of days or end of life. Whoa! And Melchizedek was resembling that. He had no beginning of days or end of life, Alpha and Omega. Revelation, Yahweh Shai is known as Alpha and Omega. Had no beginning of days and end of life. An eternal spirit. That was Melchizedek. Melchizedek was Yahweh Shai that came on the scene. He just materialized. And that happened in the scriptures. There was three that then in the in the plane, there was three that met that met uh Abraham that were angels. They just he looking at on the plane. The plane is 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 flatland. So you see things coming. And he just saw men come. Matter of fact, let me go to that. Let me go to that. Let me go to that. Okay, uh The three men that met Abraham. The three men that met Abraham. Oh, let me see. Okay, it's in. You know what I'm going to do? Let me do this. Let me go to Genesis 18. Hmm. So we are kind of going into the history. Okay, let me see something. Let me see here. Uh, let me let me put in let me put in some words. Let me put in the word eight. Let me see. Is that how you spell eight? I'm a, lou I'm a lousy speller. Okay, that's not it. Um, uh, let me see if the word calf is in there. Okay, I believe I found it. Okay, that's seven, verses seven and eight. Now let me look up the word plain. Okay, that's the first verse. 
So what I got right here. Okay, good. And Yahweh appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent of the door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked and lo, so a plain is a flat land. You can the flat land where there's no mountains, no hills, or anything you can see, you can see for miles. It says, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them. So they were a distance from him. And they just came on the scene from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. And he said, my Lord, meaning my superior, if now I have, so he knew that these were angels. Uh, I have found favor in thy sight. Pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. So it doesn't say that that was Yahawashai, but the, th the third man was Yahawashai, and there was two angels. The two angels... It doesn't tell you that in, in, in lots of time, but the, there were two men. It had to be the same two men. So Yahweh Shai came with with two other angels with him. Doesn't say whether it was Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, whatever. But um, like I said, it doesn't say it was Yahweh Shai, but it had to be Yahweh Shai. It says, and let a, let a little, and, th and this is, and, and, and these three didn't have any father or mother because they were angels that just came on the scene as grown men. The same, so how, is it hard to believe that Melchizedek just came on the scene? Because you're not, you're not spiritual, you're not a spiritual man, vocab. You can't see things in the spirit. It says, let a little water, I, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourself under the, under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye. And they got to think certain foods are called comfort foods, right? When you eat, you get comforted, right? Uh, comfort your heart. After that, ye shall pass on. For, for therefore are ye come to your servant and they said so do as thou has said go ahead get the food ready all right so wait a minute can angels eat food yes they can eat food when they're in human bodies they don't eat food in heaven i had that argument with high priest shy and high priest uh Arian, high priest shy he was talking about they eat up in heaven. i said they don't do they they do not eat up in heaven those are spirits man uh, same the same argument. It was high priest uh Arian, high priest Shia. They were saying that that in the ancient world, Israelites sentenced you to prison. Like they'll put you ten. I said, no, there ain't no sentencing in prison. They don't sentence you for ten years. They you you go to um city of refuge, man. All right? They don't they don't say, okay, you're sentenced because you did this, we're gonna sentence you to twenty years to life. They didn't do that. You either got put to death which was a capital capital crime, which was criminal when you kill somebody or whatever, it's, uh, certain things that you committed, adultery, you put to death, or you had to pay back. That, that was civil. When you stole a cattle, you had to pay back for. You, you know what I'm saying? So there was no prison, there was no, okay, King David sentenced you to 10 years. You can get paroled in seven. If good, no, that didn't happen. He ain't put no orange suit on you with fucking fringes on with fringes on it. Blessed fringes, excuse me. So the angels, did the angels eat? You damn, you damn right they ate because they were in a human body. So they said, well, while we're in this home, human body, let's eat. They said, and Abraham uh, hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the upon the, the hearth, which is the, with the ancient oven. And Abraham ran unto the unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good. 
and gave it unto a young man and he and he hasted to dress it and he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them the angels which came as men and they were eating angels can eat as long as they're in human bodies and he stood by them under the tree and they did eat so the angels were getting dead Yahweh Shai was eating the other two angels were eating but that could have been Gab, uh, Gabriel and uh, uh, Raph, uh, uh, Gabriel and uh, Maya Ka'ala or whatever so they said they said they said mm, this is pretty good man Sarah could Sarah couldn't throw down yo she can burn you know so for you people that says angels can't eat food no they know they can't eat food in the spiritual realm because they're spirits but when angels come down and they get they you can have some food for them they're gonna eat they're gonna eat Now it does say calf, so that's a controversy. We got to get in the word calf. Because you know what the Lord says about the calf. But they didn't receive all the laws. So let's see what calf translates to. Okay, so the word there is cattle, herd, oxen. I would figure that the word there, the word put there was calf, but it could have been a full-grown ox, a full-grown cow, or whatever. Oxen, which I'll tear some oxen up. Ox. And ox tails are really not ox tails, they're cow tails, but they call it for marketing purposes, they purposes they call it ox tails. Cattle. Genetic place, uh, uh, saying and a herd, herd of cattle. So it doesn't say it was an actual calf. It does say young. Let me do this. That's why you need this tool, the blue letter. Okay, that's not what I want. Let's come on back. So these are angels in the form of body. It de- well, show me that in the scripture where it says they were actual angels and they were in the heaven world and um, d- you know, they could have been Canaanites down the street. There's certain things that are in the Bible that you have to. There's a term called as as a scra- um damn, extrapolate, extrapolate. Uh, let me see if I'm saying that word right. extrapolate here's the definition of extrapolate extend the application of a method or conclusion especially one based on statistics to an unknown situation by assuming that existing trends will continue or similar methods will be applicable good she gave me that long definition but it means to take out if, if there's something written and you you fill in the blanks Ex, I said extrapolate, extrapolate, extrapolate. It's like you got the word excav- excavate, to take out of a cave. Uh, let me see, uh, or to take out of a mountain, to make a cave. Okay, so now let's come back over here. So let's listen to a little bit more. I'm going long, but bear with me. That reality. So you have the type and the anti-type with Christ. He remains a priest continually. Now, if Jesus is a priest continually, then in what way would you need other priests to come and follow after him? You would not. Do you guys understand the argument of the text here? He is a priest continually because he does not die. So how is he the first of an order of priests? He's not Mormons. He's not Haka. The bearskin 3-in-1 water hoodie blocks wind and regulates heat 10 times better than regular fleece hoodies. And You can't twist this text to give yourself power, and that's what people are running around here doing. Come on, man. Come on, man. 
remains a priest continually. Now observe how great this man was to whom Abraham, the patriarch, gave a tenth of the spoils. By the way, this non-Israelite man, this Canaanite man. And those indeed are the sons of Levi. These are Levitical priests who received the priest's office. By the way, you've got to be a son of Levi, you see. Have a commandment in the law to collect the tenth from the people. So there, the idea is there's, there's a pecking order to this. That is from their brothers, although these are descended from Abraham. It's saying, so the Levites collect from Abraham. But now he's going to make uh, an interesting parallel with this. The one whose genealogy is not traced from them had collected a tenth from Abraham and blessed the one <clears throat> who had the promises. So the idea is all the Levites are in Abraham, and yet he's the one giving the tithe to Melchizedek, recognizing that one is greater. But without any dispute, the lesser is blessed by the greater. He's showing that Melchizedek is greater than Abraham in a way. Because what do you mean in a way? It, it either is or it ain't. Why, why was Abraham uh, Melchizedek greater than Abraham? Because that was Yahweh Shai. He's a type of Christ. He's not a type of Christ. He is the Messiah. He's the Messiah. And in this case, moral men receive tithes. <coughs> but in that case, one receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives on. What's he saying? He's saying he's not a mortal man. Who? Christ, not Melchizedek. Melchizedek died. That he's not still here to... When did he die, vocab? That's a... Vo that's a, that's a uh... A title in itself. When did Melchizedek die? Like you said, the Edomites all die. All the Edomites are not here. Did did did, did, the, did Melchizedek die when the last Edomite, the last Herodian, uh, Herod, uh, family member of the family of the, of the Herodians die? When did he die? Vocab. When did he die? When did he die? He didn't die. Because he's Yahweh Shai. Today, because if he was, then why would Christ need to be here if Melchizedek is still... Do you see what I'm saying? So clearly he died. But Christ is a priest forever because he doesn't die. No one ever dies. Yahweh Shai still lives, but he's not here. He's in the spiritual realm. No, no one really dies. The scriptures say they go to sleep. After the order. Like it. Now... If you say you're a priest after the order of Melchizedek in a literal sense, what are the qualifications? Because the qualifications from this appear that you've got to live forever. And only one could do that. That you've got to be the king of righteousness. Yeah, only one could do that. And the, and the king of peace, only one could do that. You understand? One who's greater than all the priests, only one could do that. Jesus Christ, who is God. You don't get to be part of this conversation. Don't forget. Jesus Christ, I hate to say that. Who is a God. Not God. He is a God. Just like I am a God. Just like you are a devil. It, we read about it in Psalm 110. Are you guys feeling this? This is powerful. This is powerful, important stuff. And to twist this so you can have a new title? Shame. 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 Now listen to the author of Hebrews. This you probably got that from the movie Apocalypto. He got it from the <laughs> when they when they were sacrificing them. The guy says, "Shame, shame, shame!" I bet you he got it from that movie. Subtle, ingenious theological argument that he makes. So to speak, though, through Abraham, even Levi, who received tithes, paid tithes. That's a point that one greater, for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Now, if perfection was through the Levitical priesthood... What does it mean by you still in the loins of a father when Abraham met him? When you, when you understand that, and I explained it early in this video, Joseph, or um, Yahweh's father was Joseph. Was um, Joseph's um, seed still in the... In a, in a, in a, in a, in the... In the um, uh, still in David's, you know, in, in, inside of David? Yes. Because how does it work? The, the, the DNA, the spirit. Okay? 
By the way, even in verse 11, it lets you know the law was not perfect because he's pointing out the flaw, the problem. That's why it's a temporary system. It's why each covenant is greater and they're progressive. He doesn't understand that. The difference between the New Testament and the Old Testament is, which we're not in the New Testament. He's going to say that we're in, we in the New Testament. He doesn't understand. The difference is the change of the, from, the new, the, from the old to the new is that he's going to program us to keep the laws. It's not talking about I had to take some laws out and I messed up, do a redraft or whatever. No. Understand? Watch this. Now perfection was through the Levitical priesthood. From the basis of it, the people received the law. What further need was there for another priest to arise according to the order of Melchizedek? Saying, we had one guy, we never heard from him again. Why would we need another? Unless there was a flaw, a problem, a gap, and not be designated according to the order of Aaron, because he's not a son of Aaron, Jesus isn't. He's of Judah, understand? For when the priesthood is changed. But the law could never change. Isn't God the same always? Yeah, God's the same always. And he's had one plan from the beginning. And we're just getting to see it unfold. That's what the covenant's unfolding before our eyes and in history is all about. And part of them is a change in the priesthood. For when the priesthood is changed of necessity, there takes place a change of law also. Huh. It's almost like what Christians have been saying all along in their debates with these guys. For the one concerning whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe from which no one has officiated at the altar. So, you know, there's a modern day uh, critique that Jewish people offer to Christ. It's like, oh, you say he's a priest who offers sacrifices, but he's not even a son of Aaron. He's not, he's not a Levite. Well, they're right. But then we ask him, what's going on in Psalm 110 here? <laughs> Ask someone who practices Judaism to deal with Psalm 110. It's a mess. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, it's a mess. I asked a guy today. He had no idea what I was... This is a very faithful religious Jewish person. He didn't have any idea. He, did, he wasn't familiar with the first. He's going to have to ask a rabbi. Um, he, he thought maybe I was getting the translation wrong. You know? Because it's so, so out there, and yet Christianity provides the answer through Christ, Psalm 110. There's no answer in Judaism, and the answer is definitely not in Mormonism. And Lord knows it's not in Hebrewism. <laughs> right. you're, quoting, you're speaking of uh, Psalms 110, when you start from the first verse, first short psalm. Um, it's talking about what, what King David said, what he heard from his Lord. He was talking about Solomon. And he was describing Solomon as being his savior, which is uh, further proof that Solomon was Yahweh shining in another life. All right. Look at this. For the one concerning whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe from which no one has officiated at the altar. For it is evident that the Lord was descended from Judah, a tribe with reference to which Moses spoke nothing concerning priests. This shows you how Christ supersedes Mosaic law in every way, okay? And this is clearer still if another priest arises according to the likeness of Melchizedek. By the way, this shows you Jesus isn't Melchizedek. So I appreciate the, the older Christian interpretation you sometimes get where people say this is actually a Christophany. But the, I think the translation serves us well here. It's correct. It's another priest, so it's not the same guy. And it's in the likeness of Melchizedek, so it's not Melchizedek. To me, that's really definitive of this whole discussion. Also, the fact that he died, or otherwise it wouldn't make sense. The argument about Jesus never died. I want you to prove when did, when did he die? When did Melchizedek die? If anything, Melchizedek, just, just like the three angels that came to uh, Abraham, eventually they went back into the spiritual realm. They got beamed up, literally. So Melchizedek, just as... Just like Elijah, just like Enoch, they would take, they were translated. So Melchizedek was translated back into the spiritual realm. And he came back as Isaac. He came back 
as Solomon. He came back as Yahweh Shai. Shai. Understand? Who has become such not according to the law of physical requirement, but according to the power of an indestructible life. So why does he get this office of the order of Melchizedek that is mentioned so strangely and bizarrely out of nowhere in Psalm 110? It's because he never dies, such as the Adonai, who is having this royal dialogue with Yahweh in Psalm 110. That's the point. Haka, do you have an indestructible life? <laughs> do you do you understand? No one gets to be in this this order except for Jesus. He's the only one who qualifies and meets the requirements. It's black. Yeah, because that's him, Melchizedek. He's there. The order after the order, Melchizedek is Yahweh Shai. What is was in fact Melchizedek? Blasphemy to say that you're part of this. It is witnessed about him. Verse seventeen of Hebrews seven says, "You are a priest forever." according to the order of Melchizedek. So that's the author of Hebrews quoting Psalm 110.4. Do you see how the scripture fits together? For on the one hand, there is a setting aside of a former commandment because of its weakness, weakness and uselessness. <laughs> and a verse he's appealing to for his power and authority comes our new covenant reality that we've been pointing out to these guys since jump. There's a setting aside of a Mosaic commandment because it's weak and useless in this instance. You guys understand Christ is better and bigger than the Old Testament law. Verse 19, for the law made nothing perfect. And on the other hand, there is a bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. By the way, Roman Catholics, this is why we don't need the old priesthood system that you're kind of trying to imitate with your system of priests. Yeah, that's called a liturgy. Look that up. Although that's another issue, because we have one high priest who sits down, that means his work's done, after the order of Melchizedek, which is an indestructible office, because he's indestructible, so there's no one following after him. So that whole system is bunk. And that's why I thank God for Reformation Day popping off here in a second. By the way, I got a couple videos. There are archive videos that I'm re-releasing about Reformation Day coming up, and a scary one for Halloween, because it's about going to a Bob Larson act. Reformation. Um, let's look that up. I already know what it is. It's a pro Protestants that broke from the uh, Roman Catholic Church, which his doctrine is Roman Catholic. They just changed some things. That's all they did. So let's go ahead and, and prove that. Reformation, meaning. Here's the definition of Reformation. The action or process of reforming an institution or practice. A 16th century movement for the reform, for the, so this was, so we're talking about the 1500s, reform of abuses in the Roman Catholic Church ending in the establishment of the reformed and Protestant churches, which this guy is a Protestant. By, by the way, little fact here, factoid. I was raised as a a Protestant. Can you believe that? And I'll say this, the Protestants did go into scripture. They did read scripture. They did, they wouldn't like the Baptists. And my my parents said, We ain't going to no goddamn Baptist churches and nothing but dancing and singing. We're gonna learn the scriptures. So let's go. So he's nothing but a reformist. Protestant slash reform reformist. That's why you have the term reformation. He's a Roman Catholic. They just took, I don't like this thing. We're going to take that out. Oh, the Apocrypha. No, we ain't dealing with the Apocrypha. That's why he gets on us about the Apocrypha. But you were really a, deep down, you're a Roman Catholic. Exorcism, who basically gets his ideas from Hollywood. So I got a lot of stuff popping off in this channel. You definitely want to check. Plus, November 1st, my birthday's coming up. So I'm going to drop a book list because I want you guys to buy me some books. Anyways, I'm getting off topic here. <laughs> okay. Well, he's, he's celebrating his birthday. That means he's he's happy to be alive, and he was happy he was born. Well, Job would say it's different. Jo, jo, Job, you know, I hate to beg, be, I beg to differ with you, but as the saying goes, Job said he hated that he hated he despised the fact that he was born. He said he wish he was a, a you know, um, mis miscarried. Read that in Job. Uh, uh, chapter 3. Now he's looking forward to his birthday because he's blessed. <laughs> I 
On the other hand, there is a bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. And in as much as it was not without an oath. What's the oath? The oath is the Psalm 110, 4 passage. For they indeed became priests without an oath, but he with an oath. Through the one who said to him, the Lord has sworn. Because he swears to himself. He will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. So notice how much emphasis the author of Hebrews is placing on Psalm 110.4. This is very important. The background of Hebrews 7 is, yes, Genesis 14, but even more so, it's Psalm 110, specifically verse 4. So so much more Jesus also became the guarantee of a better covenant. And by the way, there's his argument about we're not in the new covenant, something else he holds to, because he's stuck on the old GMS model. Shot. It's just dead. Because Jesus is a guarantee of a better covenant. Now, I know what they'll try to say to wriggle out of it, but this is something he's presiding over right now. He's the mediator of the new covenant right now. Yes, it's not consummated, but we never said it was. But it's inaugurated, not completed. But that means we're in it. Nature of our enemy is unclear now. What do you want us to do about it? Protect us. Another damn commercial. Because the old's done away with. And the former priest, notice how it says former. That means they, they ain't relevant. They ain't, they ain't the business no more. Former priests, on the one hand, existed in greater numbers because they were prevented by death from continuing. So he had to have a bunch of them. But Jesus, on the other hand, he's doing a compare and contrast, understand? Because he continues forever, holds his priesthood permanently. Now, if Jesus holds his priesthood permanently, he's not relinquishing it. So Joseph Smith doesn't get to pick it up, and Hakka doesn't get to pick it up. No one gets to pick it up because he ain't putting it down. You heard? Therefore, he is able to save forever those who draw near to God through him. Hakka, can you do this to be part of the order of Melchizedek if you want to jump on? You got to be able to save forever those who draw near to God through you. <laughs> <coughs> drowning men can't rescue other drowning men. That's a boat you find yourselves in. Since he always lives to make intercession for them. No one is making intercession besides Christ. That's why we don't need the Mass in the whole Romanist papal system. And we definitely don't need Hakka. We need Jesus. That's fitting to have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled. See, this is per his perfection. Separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens. No one meets these qualifications. If I want to know what the qualifications are. Now there's a point where he says that uh, Melchizedek is a Canaanite. I, I don't know if I passed that point. Um, let's hope I didn't. But he actually says that uh, Melchizedek is a Canaanite, but then he says, he says that uh, that uh, well, he says he's he's a, he's a Canaanite, but he had no father and mother. It's impossible to be from any tribe or nation if you have no father and mother. But I don't know if it if it said that and I spoke on that. But I mean, you can go back and listen. I may I may drop back. A bit. For a Levitical priest, I might read the book of Leviticus and such. But I'm going to know the qualifications, requirements for a priest after the order of Melchizedek. If you want to look at it that way, I'm going to go to Hebrews chapter 7 based upon Psalm 110.4. And guess what? Every human being fails save Jesus. He does not need daily, like those high priests, to offer up sacrifices. First for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. Verse 27 destroys the wicked One West doctrine even further. A lot of you watching this live chat, you didn't know that One Westers teach that Jesus Christ was once Solomon in the pre-incarnation before he got reincarnated. And we still teach that. For the record, we still teach that. And you can't see it because you're not one of the elect. You're not an Israelite, first off. And if, even if you wasn't Israelite, you're not one of the elect. And before that, Adam. That's what they teach. <coughs> the genealogy in Luke chapter 3 gives you, tells you 
that Adam is the son of God. The, the very last verse. Um, and um, Matthew chapter 1, from the first verse of the first two verses, it says the genealogy, it says Jesus, this, it says the son of Abraham, it was just say the, the, the son of Abraham and the son of David. That beloved son was was uh, was Isaac, which is Yahweh Shai. That's why the Lord told him to, to uh, sacrifice him. Then he called the angel to pull him back, because that was a picture of him. Abraham was almost likened to the played the character of the heavenly father, and Isaac played the char character of his beloved son. So the, so Isaac was actually Yahweh Shai. Guess what? They teach that since he was Adam and then Solomon, when he died on the cross, he had to die for his own sin first. What a wicked doctrine straight from the pits of hell. That's what Hakka believes. Did you say that because you don't understand? What does it mean? Matter of fact, let me do this. It's either stripe or stripes. It's actually in uh, 2 Samuel 7 and 14. Matter of fact, let me just do this. Let me do it this way. I think I missed the letter. Okay, let me do it this way. Seventeen times. I will be his father, and he should be my son. This Yahweh, Yahweh talking. If he committed iniquity, this is before it was, he was talking to David. I will chasten him with the rod of men. I will chasten him with the rod of men, and with the stripe, the stripes. Of the children of men. If Solomon committed iniquity, did not, did not Solomon commit iniquity? Yes. So when did he get um, hit with a, with a stripe to men? Matter of fact, let me do this. I know I'm going long. Okay, let me see here. Let's just see what the commentators have to say. Let me just throw it in. I'm not even going to put commentator. Okay. And go to the shortest one. Okay, I want to commentator. Comment. I'll be a father. Bear me for a minute. Okay, if he if he commit, I found it. A warning that this high this high dignity will not exempt from him from the danger of sin, nor from its punishment. He will be chastened if need be, as men chastise their children to correct and reclaim them. Well, it doesn't tell you what, what, it, what, it, what it, when it happened. When did it happen to Solomon? The 
didn't happen. So so Solomon, the Lord promised that if he committed sin, he going he gonna you know he going he, he's gonna have to deal deal with it. He did it when he was Yahweh Shai. Let me bring this back. Jesus. That's fitting to have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled. See, this is per his perfection. Separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens. No one meets these qualifications. If I want to know what the qualifications are for a Levitical priest, I might read the book of Leviticus and such. If I want to know the qualifications, requirements for a priest after the order of Melchizedek. If you want to look at it that way, I'm going to go to Hebrews chapter 7 based upon Psalm 110.4 and guess what? Every human being fails save Jesus. He does not need God could sound like Captain Kirk and shit. What's the actor's name? Help me out y'all. I can't think of his name. I think about the only name that comes to Lennon Nimoy. What's this guy? Uh Damn, can't think of his name. Daily, like those high priests, to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. Verse 27 destroys the wicked One West doctrine even further. A lot of you watching this live chat, you didn't know that One Westers teach that Jesus Christ was once Solomon in the pre-incarnation before he got reincarnated. And before that, Adam. That's what they teach. <coughs> Guess what? They teach that since he was Adam and then Solomon, when he died on the cross, he had to die for his own sin first. What a wicked doctrine straight from the pits of hell. That's what Hakka believes because he was taught that in that cult GMS and he's still teaching it at GHS. That's what he believes. That's what he teaches. Wicked. And this contradicts it. Jesus didn't have to die for his own sin first. You liars. First for his own sins. He didn't have to do that, it's saying. It's saying he doesn't. This is what's called a what's it called? Alpha privative. I think it's a that's the these doesn't have to do this, not this, you know. He does not need daily, does not need like those high priests, does not need to offer up sacrifices, did not need to die first for his own sins or pay for his own sin first, does not need to do this, then for the sins of the people. He doesn't have to do it in that order because this he did once for all when he offered up himself. He is a sacrifice, not just the priest. And then it's done. And this has never happened again. For the law appoints men as high priests who are weak. But the word of the oath, which came after the law, because of Psalm 110, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. Whoa! This is the most fire. The most fire thing. This has got me excited. Let me play some. Let me play something. Let me play something. Okay. Now, we're going to close on that. That's all. You know, this is just commentary based upon this video right here. So with that, I'm going to say Shalom. I know I went long. Please forgive me for going long. Shalom. On to the next Shalom. What the hell did I just do?